In the previous program, we discussed the use of adjuvants in total spray droplet management. In this program, we'll discuss how weather conditions interact with spray droplets and affect the application process. Weather also has a big impact on the spray application process, and it's important to understand how the various factors of weather impact the spray so that you can achieve total spray droplet management. First thing we'll discuss is the wind. Both the wind speed and wind direction have a big impact on drift. Pretty obvious, but as the wind speed increases, we have an increased risk of drift. Larger and larger spray droplets are able to be carried off target in the wind, and those spray droplets are carried farther as the wind speed increases. Also important is wind direction. Drift only moves downwind. So by knowing what direction the wind is blowing, you can't prevent it, but you can at least plan the application around the wind direction. So leave a buffer zone on, a, on the appropriate side of whatever the, the target area is so that you keep spray drift off any sensitive areas. You can go back later and spray that buffer zone when the wind is blowing in the opposite direction. Also important are temperature and humidity. Both temperature and humidity affect the same thing, evaporation. As it gets hotter and drier out, so higher temperatures, lower relative humidity, evaporation increases. This has an impact on that transportation phase of the application process. Those droplets have been created by the nozzle, they are traveling from the nozzle to the target, and as they make that trip, they're prone to evaporation. Now, as a rough rule, I usually say that droplets that are 200 microns or larger in diameter aren't really affected too much by evaporation. When we talk about droplets around 100 microns in diameter, evaporation has a big impact on them. What happens is they shrink in size as they're evaporated. As they shrink, they get much smaller and more prone to being blown off target as drift. Once we get down to 50 microns or smaller, those droplets are so small that they evaporate completely. So we lose them entirely from the spray. Very calm conditions are also not good to spray under. They also increase the risk of drift. Very calm conditions occur during a temperature inversion. What is a temperature inversion? During most of the day, let's say middle of the afternoon, the warmest air is at the Earth's surface. As we move up in elevation away from the Earth's surface, the temperature gets colder. Warm air rises, so during this period, we've got warm air rising from the Earth's surface up into the upper atmosphere and being replaced with cold air from above. During a temperature inversion, which occur early in the morning and then later in the afternoon and into the evening, there is a layer of cold air below that layer of warm air. So we lose our vertical air mixing. We say the atmosphere is very stable. We don't have any air mixing. How this impacts the application process can best be described by visualizing what you see when you're out traveling early in the morning and you see a patch of fog hanging over a field. If we think about what fog is, fog is composed of very small water droplets. When we look at that patch of fog, the one thing we notice it's not doing is it's not moving. Fog is water droplets, well, so is rain. Rain falls to the ground. Why is the fog not falling to the ground? It's because those droplets are very, very tiny. They're essentially dust sized. They are too light to fall to the ground. The fog is not moving horizontally because there is no wind. It's early in the morning, very calm. And the fog is not lifting up into the upper atmosphere because we're under a temperature inversion. We have no vertical air mixing at the surface. So if you think about that fog just hanging there in the air, and you think about what would happen if you sprayed during that same time period, when you're out spraying during that time period, any of the small spray droplets that you create during the spraying process, the same thing will happen to them. And primarily, we're not talking about droplets that are large here, you know, 300, 400, 500 micron droplets. Heavy enough, they're going to fall to the ground. What we're talking about are those droplets smaller than 100 microns. So how can you tell when there's a temperature inversion occurring? Well, the official way would be to take two temperature readings, one at the surface and one in the atmosphere above. If the temperature at the surface is colder than that above it, you're under a temperature inversion condition. Most of us, however, don't have the ability to take a temperature reading. We can easily take that temperature at the Earth's surface, but we can't get 20, 30 feet into the air and have to take another temperature reading. So there are various visual cues that we can use 
to determine if there's an inversion. First of all, can we see the inversion? We mentioned fog, that's one visual indicator. However, it's important to note that just because you don't see fog does not mean there is not an inversion occurring. You can look for columns of smoke. If you see smoke moving up into the air and suddenly stopping its vertical movement, leveling off and moving horizontally, it has encountered a temperature inversion. You can also hear and smell an inversion. The, the sounds and smells, the same thing occurs to them that it occurs to those very small droplets. They're able to travel longer distances because there's no air movement to disperse them. Another way to do it is temperature change. Uh, a, one good rule is a three degree increase from the morning low. So whatever your morning low is, the lowest temperature occurred that occurred throughout the night, once the temperature has reached a point that's three degrees above that, you can generally be assured that that inversion has broken and it's safe to spray. In the afternoon, when inversions begin to occur once again, we start to have our inversion formation process, it's a five degree drop. Once the temperature has dropped five degrees or more from that afternoon high, then you need to start thinking that you probably have a temperature inversion beginning to form.